Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayin, Het. No, yes, Het. I've almost got it. Wait. It rhymes. It does. Tet. <laughs> Yod. Aleph, Slamming. Beth, Gimel, Dalet, He. Uh, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yod. Yes. There we go. Ready to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, Cringe Walker. You, re you ready for he Hebrew? I wouldn't be surprised if Cringe Walker just secretly knows every Semitic language already. It's kind of pulls out of the back pocket. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'm I may be a child in some of these respects, but at least I'm trying. How are you doing, Philip? Amazing. And you? Great. Yes, doing well. I'm excited. This is this is becoming the peak of the week. <laughs> That's great. For me as well. Ah, oh, good. I, I've actually done my homework this week. As you could hear, I, I practiced saying the letters. Um, I can't promise I'll always find time for homework. But at the moment, then, you know, I'm feeling like a I'm feeling like the, um, the the SWAT at the front of class who's actually done what they were told to do, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I yeah. even I even wrote out. I went through the previous streams and look, I took notes oh, on like goodness. every everything that you were saying. So that's very impressive. <laughs> I'm ready to I go. Feel honored. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, my aim is kind of to make these so that you just remember everything after you've gone through it once, but uh, that's probably not possible. <laughs> oh, well, I, it, if, yeah. if, if you want me to stop revising after streams, then I I, I will. But, um, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> but you, you, it will result in us ceasing progress. Because <laughs> it'll, probably. believe me, if, if, if I didn't revise, you would just be reteaching me everything a week later that you previously taught me. Um, Perhaps if I were perhaps if I were younger and had a more supple mind, then that would be a feasible strategy. Mm. Getting old. <laughs> um, yes, I need I need my um, my gimel style walking stick just to get around. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that we'll get to another walking stick today. Actually, Ooh. in the in the which kind of complements the gimel nicely, in the way that you implied before. Yes. By quoting Psalm 23, uh, I think when we learned it. <clears throat> yes, I remember. Okay. Yeah. Shall I share your screen? Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be good. Then we can do a bit of a recap. So it's, so we've heard the first five letters again. You've you've done the first ten, which is great. It's Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalet, He. And so last time we, we looked a bit at how one might be able to, just for fun, this, I haven't, this isn't official at all, but but I quite like experimenting with the theology behind the letters. But but so we had Aleph and Beth. This is Aleph. He's Elohim, God, and he's living in his Beth in his house. Yeah, the, which... the Aleph was the bull and was associated with Baal. But you said also we should think of as associated with the... See, I, I actually this week know what happened in the first stream much better because I rewatched it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, is is the think the mighty bull, or we can think of it maybe as representing God. Yeah, exactly. So Elohim also has something to do. The word Elohim has something to do with might, and because a bull is kind of a symbol of strength, uh, it, yeah, it's often used to represent deity. I guess and we the measure um, like the strength of an engine in horsepowers. So uh -huh. even today, we use agricultural metaphors to talk about exactly power. yeah so so we had uh the centerpiece here which is kind of like the holiest of holies in the temple and god in his house yeah yeah and then we had the gimel this is kind of like the king sitting in his throne he is empowered by the fact that god allows him to rule on earth so it's kind of the militant arm I would call it the left hand kingdom, the gimel, the weapon, the stick you use to beat things rather than, as opposed to just walking around. <laughs> Think of it as a sword cane. <laughs> or something yes. Like that. Yeah. And then there's the dialect, which is kind of 
which means door. So here one could imagine the prophet hmm. uh, who opens the door of his mouth to what, proclaim the word of God. And then over here we had here, which is the place of the priest. It's worship. Halal, hallelujah. We all know that Hebrew word. So praise God. And that happens in the temple. So this is kind of a priestly letter to my mind. And so that those were the first five letters. So we looked at them conceptually, but the last time around. And then we learned five Zayin, which are like a the nail. manacle and the nail. Exactly, yes. Yeah, that's brilliant. So you remember that still. Um, and these to me are kind of like fixing letters. So they affix things. So here in the middle, we've kind of got we've got heavenly reality. So kings are, are intimately also related in a priestly way, um, and prophets as well, to the mediation of the divine into a more mundane world. So into a world that's got to do with more practical things like you just you know you have to survive so so to me this this marks a kind of transition into the practical reality of everyday life and here in this sphere we've got the no let me just try and remember <laughs> how did i categorize this? Cat, which was yes. the um braid Is that right? yes yeah it was exactly that's perfect so the braid I'm going to connect it to the hair because it's similar in its sound. The braid is the result of the work of your hands. Hmm. But before we get there, we've got the, do you know, do you remember what this the next was? The loom. Is? Yes, exactly. So we've got the loom over here. The prophets kind of spins a tapestry of fate and the D sound and the T sound also quite similar so and and likewise the shape of the hair is similar to the shape of the cat and the the you could see a t like a a latin t glyph in both of the dalet and the tat yes yeah that's that's very true <laughs> that's quite cool um so there's so there are similarities here between these triads that we find on on the other side of the vav and Sain which shackle us to mundane reality. And then finally, we have the letter. Yod. Exactly. Which, do you remember what it means? Um, no, I just remember we got sucked into a big conversation about the tetra, whatever it is, granite. Yeah, tetra, grammaton. Grammaton. Gr yeah. grammar, grammar comes from the same word, which it, it's, I also remember it's, it's like the jot in in that it's the smallest Hebrew letter. Yeah, exactly. It's so the, the yad in Hebrew, the same word would be yad, uh, which means hand. So yad is hand. Uh, hand. Okay. Yeah. And and I guess again the sounds are similar because the the y is kind of a vowel that you pronounce at the back of your throat. And if you were to just pronounce it a bit harder, you'd get to the the g or the r. Yes, it's yeah. that's actually one of the the common. That's like a law in language, I think. <laughs> Although I'm not entirely sure what it would be called or where it applies, but but you see that a lot, especially in Germanic languages. But I think it might even happen in like Spanish, uh, where the g turns into a into a y sound. Hmm. Yeah. So, so they are quite related, which is very interesting. It's inter I mean, I sort of made this up, so, but it actually does seem to have some credibility to it. I didn't make it up. I, I'm trying to connect dots. So, we can. All, I, I don't know if I'm just imagining things, but I can also see a similarity between the the yod as drawn and the gimel. Yeah. <laughs> like if if you just stretched the yod down and then added the little tail. Yeah, but ma but maybe all the maybe all the glyphs could be transformed into each other, and we're kind of seeing seeing things <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. Well, they definitely look similar. They, and I think mm. they're supposed to as well for the sake of making the writing easy. But today we're going to learn about 
hopefully 10 new letters, but it might just end up being another five. The first of which, I guess we can recap them next week again, uh, but maybe we'll even get to the end of the alphabet. So the first of the letters that we are going to look at this week is related to Yod in terms of what it means. It's the letter Kaf. Kaf. Yes. So this letter looks very much like a backwards C. Let me actually make this a bit bigger. It looks, it looks like this. And it means the palm of your hand. So where Yod means hand, the cuff is the, the palm of your hand. And it, mm. it also comes from, um, what are they called? Hieroglyph, hieroglyphic letters that look similar to this. They sometimes differ, but it's sort of something along this line. And that's supposed to be an outstretched hand. And that is the, ah. the palm of the hand. And so it's the shape of the thumb and the fingers that, okay. that leads to this. So I don't know if you want to practice them again. On, on yeah. Screen. Do you want to? Do you want me to share my screen instead? I think that'd be good. Me, see if I'm doing it correctly. Like that. Yes. Perfect. Now, it is how does this scale compared to the others? Is this like, you know, if I draw a, um, you know, that, and then would it be kind of like this? Same kind of size. Yeah, exactly. And you can even write a word now oh. um, that, we've on, come, that we haven't come across before. <laughs> Tell me the letters. OK. Uh, so it would be cuff and then Kaf. your new newly learned letter. <laughs> look at and that then, straight away. Look at them apples. Yeah, looking <laughs> gorgeous. Um, and then Beth. How do you like them apples? <laughs> I was like, Where, what do you? <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Kaf, Beth, and then Avav. That's a new one from last week. That just, just, oh no, you said don't put too much of a uh, point on the end because otherwise it looks like as, as whatever the Z one was. Yeah, yeah, that one's perfect though. Um, it's important to Zayin. Have... No, no, the, so the last letter would be Dalit, but for the Vav, uh, it's just important to make sure the the tail doesn't go beyond the the bottom of the beth, so that it's the same uh, thing. We don't want a descender into the depths. Hmm. Who shall descend? Is there another one the... that does that? <laughs> yes. Is this a yeah, different there, letter? There is. Yes, exactly. I think I spotted that. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, sorry, you said the next one was a Dalit. Dalit. Uh, Dalit was this yes exactly perfect <laughs> so yeah. this new one is called calf was it calf with a ph calf. at the end yeah calf calf so calf uh, um zad oh no not uh, the hard d do we want hard letters for any of these yeah, the first, so so there is kind of it, I'm still trying to figure it out a bit, but it seems okay. like if you've got syllables, mm -hmm. then the first letter in a syllable will be hard, mm -hmm. and then uh, if there's joined, yeah, bits, then the sorry. last one will also be hard. Let me let me make a correction. So at the beginning okay. of the word, the letter will generally be hard. Yeah, and then if there's something that happens to the word, then one looks, then one starts to look at syllables, <laughs> but nothing's happened to this word just yet. So, so let's so just say first letter, kava, za, and then d. No, z. Sorry, the kavahav, kava zav. No, kava. <laughs> This is the the kind of v. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm just that's simplifying great. to v. So, is this a c, right? Kav. Yeah. And then this one is 
z so kavaz and no, no, this that's, one is... so that's that that's the vav oh the sorry vav. yeah i'm no, no, mixing it's... it up with the zayin yes exactly um, uh, now, see, differentiating between the pronunciation of the Beth and the Vav is difficult because I'm kind of pronouncing the Beth as if it was as if it was a, a Vav. So it's Kavavad. Mm. Yes, so that's that's really good. I'm even kind of thinking in recent times that that's an archaic pronunciation of how this word might have been pronounced at a time. But if you uh, now think back to the rule of the V being synonymous with a u okay in so, latin so then that would be kavoth yes exactly kavoth Kav kavoth yeah I, I i look forward to watching this stream back in a couple of months and being amazed how long it took me to to read this <laughs> at least no, it'll that... be encouraging at that point <laughs> yeah exactly if, if you could quickly switch back to my screen, then then I'd yeah. just highlight certain aspects of this word because it's a very important word in, in the Bible. Um, so we've got kavod. And so this will usually be hard, um, <clears throat> if I remember that correctly. Mm -hmm. And this word comes from a shorter word. It's an, In this state, it's a noun, and it means glory. And it's got something to do with weightiness because it comes from the verb. Oh, that's a that's a terrible cuff. It comes from the verb, which is spelled almost identically. I can't spell it though, <laughs> uh, which is kavad. So ah. you 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 remove the o sound, which is over here. So ka this... ka kavad versus. Ka what, what are we saying the O is? Kavod. Kavod, yeah. Kavod, okay. <clears throat> yeah, like a strong O sound. And here, here we can see that consonants begin to take on the character of vowels because mm. you can't see the vowel in the word unless you have some other way of writing the vowels, which what, what is that at a later um, stage. What is that verb? Kavod, kavod. So kavod means for something to be heavy. Okay. Heavy. And mm. that turns into kind of the weightiness of, of God and turns into his, I've got another arrow over here, <laughs> emphasizing the fact that it's his glory. So God's glory has something to do with him taking on weight, which mm. in kind of modern physics <laughs> would indicate that he becomes material almost, like matter always has weight or something like that. Mm. Um, which is very interesting because there's a lot of exegetical studies that speak about God's glory being Christ. And mm. so you've got God's glory revealing itself throughout the Old Testament and in the New Testament then being identified as Christ. Christ is the glory of God, uh, especially Christ crucified. There, In this crowning moment, you, you see God <laughs> revealed as uh, Christ crucified. The, the folly of the cross, as it were. Because if, if there's anything that is signifying of matter, it is its its mass. Um, and, and also the, the most significant things have a lot of inertia and, can, <laughs> you know, are heavy. They can resist, they, you know, the will of others and they, they're, you know, have power and all these kinds of connotations. Exactly. So, so that's a cool little... Uh, what do you call it? Expedition I'll add that to that my vo on. vocab section. Yes, that, that's on. Oh yes, yeah. Your your note, your fancy notebook. <laughs> well, it's not a fancy notebook. This is the exact type of blue book that in the UK you get at secondary school. Oh so my. I was quite <laughs> quite pleased to discover those in my work stockpile. I was like, okay. aha, <laughs> back to <Perfect>. school. <laughs> yeah. So. So that's oh, Cr Cr cringe Walker says I'm a minority opinion, but I think the V was a later shift, and and the Wow maybe the original Latin is technically older than Greek. Winky face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so there are these shifts that happen. You can you can trace them 
you can trace their occurrence in almost every language, it seems like. At least that's a lot of the languages that I've learned a bit about and that I've heard about have undergone the same kind of shifts in terms of the consonants kind of becoming vowels or becoming other consonants and, and things like this. So it's, it's very interesting. It, it seems to just be a, a pattern that you find across th humankind almost. Mm. It always I'm kind of mad that Latin is older than Greek. I never thought that was the case. I always associated Latin with the rise of the Roman Empire and the Romans as being later than the Greeks. So that kind of breaks my brain a little bit. Yeah. Well, actually, I would have thought that as well. Sorry, maybe I didn't look at Crunchwalkers. He says yeah. um, Latin is technically older than Greek. Yeah. By that, oh, I mean Latin and Hebrew and other Mediterranean languages seem to have shared this shift. Yes. OK, that's very interesting. Right. Yeah. Carry on. But to get back to the Hebrew. <laughs> so so this is this is Kaf, but now it gets complicated. Um, at the end of a word, and here I can teach you another word, the Kaf gets a new form, which looks very much like the dialect. Oh, no. But it gets a long tail, which is Great. why it's important not to not to give things long tails unless they really need them. <laughs> mm, that looks quite Arabic to me. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. You can make it a bit more straight if you want. Uh, yeah, but like the point it. is just that it's it's kind of a dialect, but with a much longer tail. And the idea is that the cuff basically just loses its closed character and opens up because it's the last syllable. I mean, the last letter in the word. And just as an example, so you can vis visualize it a bit, I'll also give you a new word. Um, is although you should actually write it, so maybe you can share your screen switch, again. And then I'll, switch to my screen. Yes. Hopefully, you can remember how to write the new, <laughs> the new uh, but, version of Kaf. Yeah. There like you that. go. Look at them apples. I mean, uh, them, <laughs> this, I this was the apple, the calf. <laughs> it, it's kind of um, grown into a tree. Exactly. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's been planted. And now it's sprouted. Yeah. Look, here is a dialect, and I can turn it into. A so cuff. what is this like? A, it's like a capital cath, or just a different way to draw it? Do you do you ever find both of these being used within the same document? Yes. Yeah. So so the the one you've done it perfectly because this cuff, the big cuff, only occurs at the end of a word. It indicates uh -huh. basically that it's the last letter in the in the word, and for some reason, if it's a cuff at the end of the word, then it takes on its word end form takes on its final form. Um, <laughs> Literally, it's final form in this case. Yeah. Yes. So wow. that's such so, a pointless language innovation. It's like it's not adding any meaning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, I guess it means that as you're as you're writing quickly, if you don't space your words out enough, then you know that that was the end of a word. Does oh well? Here's a question: What if it's part of a preposition and it has? Um, agglutinated itself oh. to the to the next word well well let's let let me teach you a new word so so if you get rid of uh what is now kavoch instead of kavod i don't know if that's, <laughs> i don't think that's a word um it might be uh but a new word uh it would be spelled beth And then, oh, I just realized you haven't learned the slit yet. Uh oh. Okay. So keep while well, you've learned the you've learned the cuff. Let's let's try and rush ahead to this last letter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then put the put the final cuff. Okay. Cuff at the end. Okay. So okay. So. You can't write it like that, unfortunately. That looks a lot like a <laughs> like another letter. Um, what so... the question mark looks like another letter? No, no. The the oh, the way I've just drawn the cat. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you try to make a bit more round. No, no. It it has to have a longer tail. So the tail has to go. Oh, because it's at the end. Oh. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was still just drawing it in its non-final form. Oh, I see. Wah! Yes. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Now you can't get much longer tails than that, except yes. for this. <laughs> <laughs> and then what you could actually do as well is put the final cuff at the end of kavod. 
put another letter at the end. Yes, put put the final cuff at the end of that. Yeah. And what we would have here is the addition of a preposition to the end of a word. So if you mm. if you switch back to my screen, maybe I can explain that a bit, and then we'll move on to the Just next letter. Maybe I'm doing too mm. much extra grammar <laughs> in between. But by the time we actually get to the to the writing of words, then you'll have learned a lot already, I hope. Yeah, I think you're mixing them together really well because the just just letters could have got monotonous and just grammar would have been monotonous and just vocab would have been monotonous. But this way, we've got a nice mix. Okay. So so what we've got here is we've got kavod. We know that this is a word because we've learned it now so we can recognize it. We can be like, ah, I recognize this word. That means glory. glory. Yeah. And so we can recognize that this is also... This is a this has been added on to the back of the word now. We've had things added on to the to the front, like ha, for example. So this would also make it a definite word. Ha kawadak. Almost. Or as a matter of fact, I think you can even pronounce it like that if this were just silent on the end. That would make it feminine and well, let me just explain what it means. So this is the, we've, we've learned this one. This is the, this is glory. Glory. Yeah. Glory. And then this final element here on the, this particle would be a pronominal suffix is what it's called. So it's a pronoun like I, you, he, she, it, uh, we, you, they, it's one of those. And, and, the end. and it's a suffix, yeah. So it's a pronominal suffix is what they call it. And in this case, it would mean um, you, but in the feminine. Okay. So, so this is the glory of you if mm. you're speaking to a woman. So the glory of you. Would, you or would we say that as your glory yes exactly hmm. i was about to say she'd probably look at you funny if <laughs> she said this this is the glory of you um, yeah isn't isn't there um uh it's maybe in the new testament is it no in is it in proverbs that the gray hair is her glory something like that anyway i'm wondering <laughs> if this actually exists so but is this following the same kind of rules that you have the subject, then the object. Is that why it's a suffix? Perhaps. I think so. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but but that would make sense. I think you always have prepositions attached to the front of the word, and then you've always got the pronouns attached to the end of the word. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And you also get independent pronouns um, if you want to emphasize. <laughs> If we have a different vowel, do we get the masculine form of this um, pronominal suffix? Exactly. So if, if this were an A, a long A sound, kavodeja, ha kavodeja would be um, your glory, but if you're speaking to not a woman, but a man, <laughs> or if you're speaking to God. So you could say, ha, 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 I can't speak anymore. <laughs> Hetha would be the glory of him. Yes, your of glory. You, oh, you, you, masculine. Okay. Yeah. So the glory of your your glory. And if you're speaking to God, that would be Jesus. <laughs> or Israel is like, your glory or something like that. Your your glory <clears throat> is displayed in the heavens. Yes, yeah, that's this. perfect. Would be yeah, that would be something like kavodecha b'shamayim or b'shamayim or something along those lines. Is in the heavens. I don't know what displayed is in this moment. Um, so yeah, so that that is the letter kaf. So we've we learned one letter again. That's great. Um, and then the next letter, but it's got two forms. So that's important to remember and to be able to differentiate. The next letter will be the letter that that I've implied, I can't remember if that was on or off stream now, but you were talking about walking sticks and mm -hmm. we had that before in the Gimel in a sense. But the Gimel is better thought of as a sword. Yes. Yeah. Now we've got a letter that could be interpreted as a shepherd's crook. Mm. 
So if you think of your rod and your staff, and you've got the one that he uses to beat the bears and the one that he uses to catch the sheep that are running away. And this one looks kind of like a yod at first. Okay. But then it's like another yod, but bigger. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and in terms That's of its something size. Pleasingly recursive about that. Yeah. In terms of its size, it's it's the same size as normal letters. So it, it might look like it's got a big tail like the cuff, but it, it's actually normal size. Um, and is that yod size the first bit of it? Yes, is exactly. It the same size as the yod. Okay. Yeah. And that tends um, to stick out the top a little bit, um, if I remember that mm -hmm. correctly. So here's actually, here's another word that you can learn. Uh, how would you pronounce this? Oh, well, you haven't told me the pronunciation of the new letter yet, I don't think. Ah, yes. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. So th this one is called Lamed. This one. Lamed. Okay. Yes. A bit like Lamech. Yes, exactly. But with a D at the end. Okay. And Lamed, uh, what, what would you imagine that to be? Uh, I mean, an, uh, is it an L? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Lambda, you could <laughs> This is my letter. And, Yes, this is your letter. <laughs> you can Lamed. change your channel name now to, to Lamed instead of Lambda. L Lambda. <laughs> Until I go back to learning Greek. And <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Then I'll be torn. Exactly. Yeah. Can I have a. <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to go for Lavev. Hang on. It's got Lavev. Lavev. It's all well, you're Lavev. on, right? Yeah, well, no, no, no. Lavev was was a bit closer. It's um, Levev actually, and here's oh. another a kind of rule, rule of thumb, I guess, um, is that if it's a noun, so if it's a verb, you just supplement the vowel a. So like, barach uh, or malach or whatever. If it's it's a verb, then you just put a's. But if it's a noun, <laughs> then the tendency is that it's the sound is a, so this would be levev. Levev, yeah. like the Levant. Levev, yes. or, or well, yeah, oh, who knows? Okay, so, <laughs> so this is this is the lamed. No. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. lamed. Okay. Lamed. Yeah. La med. And now I guess you can practice writing the letter. Oh yeah. But you can also write this word because it's also a very important word. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, we've even lost the background color. That's right. Oh <laughs> so it's a yard and then a giant yard. Oh, yes. Uh, added a bit at the end there. And uh, that's the trouble of writing with the trackpad. When you lift off your finger, then it goes it a bit wild. Yeah. Uh, and then it was two baths, right? Yes, exactly. And then I'll also add the little bowling pin style vowel symbols. Oh, nice. <laughs> that indicate an E eh vowel. Yes. Yeah. Which is common for. Uh, did you say common for nouns or common for verbs? Yes, for nouns, exactly. For nouns. So you had what did, kavav. What did this mean again? Uh, I haven't I haven't said yet. Oh, but okay. This is this is also a very important word. This is the word heart, your heart, ah. your midmost center in which all of your thoughts take place. And I don't um, know if they had this symbol at that point. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, it might have been a letter in some Paleo Hebrew ah. alphabet script or something. <laughs> don't know. Yeah, but. Levev is heart, and in some cases, especially if it combines with other words, the second Beth just assimilates with the first one so that you, or it disappears, it drops off the, off the map. Was there a connection between Levev and Achava? Well, you can have love in your heart, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's just a modern kind of pop song thing in the, in the 21st century, but... Yeah, that I mean, that would be interesting to to look into, mm. to see how they okay. occur related to one another. If Great. you want, it it might be nice to. <laughs> Matt Matt's here saying he's a fellow believer and nerd viewer. 
<laughs> awesome. Come in and join, join the throng. Yes. Okay, but the, so that's Lamed. I think I think you've got it. Yep. Great. And I think we can practice a sentence with some of these new words uh, at the All end right. of the stream. But but let's get into another let's letter on. while we have time. Yep. So the next letter is uh, mem. This one's also really important, and I'm really excited to finally get to this one because I've been trying to think of words, and a lot of them have this in it. <laughs> so, so it's called mem, and it's originally you can you can see something in this pronunciation, which reminds us of a Hebrew word, which is mayim, and the original. Uh, versions of this letter look something like this. Ooh. And what you can see here, I mean, it looks a little bit like the Greek uh, uh, M, which I've forgotten the name of for some reason, so which you'll see is for micro. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Mu is what it's mm -hmm. called, mu, actually. Mu. So, so that's the, the Greek letter. But you can see this this letter is found Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh my goodness, you know, you know the Greek already? <laughs> that's cool. Um, <laughs> Well, apparently not out of context. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Just but... remember writing these funny squiggly things because you, you you run out of letters when you're doing maths. Yes, exactly. Uh, now, now that I've got some Hebrew letters as well, just imagine the mathematical possibilities. Yes, they're infinite. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the shape of the letter is similar to the ocean. And oh, yeah. that's also kind of the significance of this letter is water. Mayim means water, and you, you find it in the beginning. Haruach uh, Elohim, or Haruach Elohim, or Ruach Elohim, I can't remember. Mirachefet alpanei hamayim, which means the spirit of God hovered over the waters. And and that's these, them the waters that the spirit <laughs> is hovering over. Yes. Um, and the letter itself is spelled like this. So it's kind of like a Huh. Dome, and then it's got the tail. Classic. Ah. The classic intro to every letter, but it's for some reason uh, on the top corner of the <laughs> of the letter. I think that tail is a real botched job. <laughs> exactly. So, so if you would let me draw one. let me still teach you the final form because the mem also has a final form, and then I want to ask you to write the word for water. Oh, yes, which will have both forms of the mem. Exactly. So it will look almost like this. That's the, this is the, I mean, this is the final form of the letter, mem. Mm. So as Much opposed to the integrated tail there. Exactly. Uh, so we've, yeah, I, I feel like they, the, the final form is like v V2. Yes. V2. Although there's something kind of cute about the, the unf unfinal <laughs> form of mem. It's like a Pokemon or something. Yeah, this one's uh, kawaii. It's, and... yeah, it's got that kawaii asymmetry, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll do Japanese next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what have we devolved in? No, I'm straight. Um, but yeah, no, this is... Uh, that's that. I think you should be able to to manage now if you, if you want to practice it and then try and write the word mime. <clears throat> okay. So here's me practicing the, oh, what's happened to my brush? The normal form. Nice. With the tail. Perfect. And then the final form, like that. Perfect. That's glorious. Okay. So you've got it. But they're obviously, I can't just stick a letter in the middle because they're the wrong way around. Yes, perfect. You even noticed that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to go ahead and assume it starts like this. Now, my e sounds like it might have a yod in the middle. That's correct. This is correct. <laughs> My now is it just a, is it just three letters? Yep. Most three. most Hebrew words are. Except when they decide they need to change the pronunciation and they add another vowel in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. The waters. Looks like go. Chinese, says Larry. Nice. Are there rules regarding stroke order? Good question. Yes, there are. So you usually start at the top left and then you work your way down to the bottom right. And then you add things in afterwards, working mm. from the top right to the bottom left, if I have that correct. So it's like that. And then you come back up here and go like that. Yeah. Okay. So now you've written my uh, If you box in the M of my Shall I put a different color? Yeah, that would be good. Uh, okay. what, what will go? I think a green. Lovely green. Colors of Sorry, the bo box in what? The first uh, mem. Just the first one? Yes. So what's interesting is that this can be seen in a lot of other words if it's attached to the front of a word as a preposition. Hmm. Is it a preposition that has some connection to the sea? In a, in a sense, now that you mention it, actually, if you think of where does all life come from, what preposition do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if um, the sea is so broad in its applicability that you could have just come up with a preposition <laughs> related to the sea. <laughs> so are you saying out of? Yes, essentially. So from or of? From, OK. Mm -hmm. And the the yam, which is left over, the the yod and the mem, mm -hmm. is actually the word for sea. Oh, so mayim would be water or waters. It's always a plural word, mm -hmm. and the word yam is sea. Because of course, where does water come from? From the sea. From the sea. So we've got. <laughs> from the sea, and then the word is mine. But what's also important to remember is that uh, this ending of the word, the, the yod mem, is the normal masculine plural for any masculine word, for any noun. So the im sound at the end of a word, for example, nephilim, uh, I don't know if there's another common, rephaim, uh, cherubim, mm. all of these words, they end with im, and that indicates that they're plural. A bit and like how the sea is just enormous and massive. And you might talk in English about a sea of people because they're so multiple. Exactly. So so there's, it's got yeah multiplicity or uh, um, plurality to it. And also, if you look at the sea, right, it's just a bunch of waves, like mm. endless duplicate of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so mine is a plural word, but it's there's no singular. It's just waters, the waters. And the word shamayim is heaven, but we'll get to that in a bit. And it's similar to the word mayim. So it's it's very interesting how, how some of these concepts connect to one another. And even the word yam <laughs> uh, being at the end of mayim in some sense. Hmm. So, so this so in a way, the word for sea is the word that is just from the many. Or yeah, the, the, the plurality of coming. Yes, and it's uh, this is how some of the, the the Jewish rabbis actually do philology, which is really interesting because they they'll do things like this, or they'll they'll look at an aleph, for example, and they'll be like, this letter contains individualism in a sense, or individual individuality, because it's always used to indicate the first person imperfect of a word, like we had God saying, "Ehiyeh Asher Ehiyeh," I am that I am, and that word starts with the aleph. Mm. Um, I, I can see how people make the duality um, a, a, a po opposing th this kind of thinking against Greek thought and how that could really come out of the language. And, mm. and you mentioned how uh, English spelling is very analytical. It's, yes, totally, yeah. it's a totally different way of considering reality in, in this case. And I think would be the same, like with Chinese characters and so on. You, 
everything's overloaded with you're kind of accumulating the more things you add to it the the more complex the picture gets whereas with greek you just kind of have one precise you know you, you just attach the semantic participles together and you get a a meaning and it's it's <laughs> not it's not intended to bring with it symbolic additions inherently or, or maybe I'm over. Maybe I'm making an unfair generalization because, of course, you know you could read about the, like in in Paul's writing, which is in Greek, the terms are very heavily overloaded with with meaning. But, but I mean, he does presumably have a great deal of he, Hebrew knowledge <laughs> like yes, at his disposal. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think I think one can sort of look at Greek and and find all of these significances and so on. But even Greek okay. is is very closely related to to uh, really <laughs> some okay. of these sounds, at least not not the languages, not in the structure mm. and so on. But 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 one can read Greek in the same way. But Greek doesn't read itself in that way, I don't think. Um, but one can begin to see other languages in the same light. Uh, but Grinch Walker quite... says, hence why the prophetic beasts come out of the sea. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and, and the nations are also... The, all of the chaotic powers in Scripture that are opposed to Christ and, and the work of God that is to destroy the works of the devil, um, they tend to be associated with the ocean, which is why it's so profound when Christ walks on the waters of Kinnereth, mm. or what's it called? Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. And he, and he commands them to be quiet, and they obey. He rebukes mm. them uh, when he's in the boat. So there's a couple of stories where he like explicitly actually commands this this plural being to obey, and it does. So and the, the Leviathan, of course, that that lives yes. in the sea. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's carry on, or or, or, or we will. I mean, we'd easily be able to just talk forever, wouldn't we? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, and interesting. And there was no more sea in Revelation yes. after Satan is defeated, which I guess you could look at this and say maybe what it's saying is there is no more of the sort of cu coming of multitudes in some sense. I think it would be the, the disharmony, um, the mm. chaotic disharmony between the the within the diversity that God has created uh, through his word, which is divisive in the sense that he creates things each according to their kind. Huh. So it creates division, guess but it's supposed to be harm harmonious. In the God beginning. starts by creating order out of chaos, as is popularly put nowadays, and the sea represents the chaos. You know, let's start by making a patch of order within the sea that he began floating over. And then at the end of Revelation, that order has expanded to be everything. And and now there isn't, you know, that creation start has kind of completed by taking over the whole world. Yeah, that's that's very cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's because it would be the perfect conclusion to the story which began with the spirit hovering over the waters. Now it's God inhabiting the dry earth in a sense. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny because that puts the pre-existent chaotic waters as an evil force that God didn't create, which is not the on sort of cosmology that Christians generally approve of. Um, so but may, maybe there's some theologic problems with this idea, but I, I think it's quite interesting. Are you are you uh, are you ready to move on to the next character? Yeah. So if you if you switch back to my screen, um, I hope this is Whoa. recognizable. Snake. Yes. Excellent. You got it straight away. My, my uh, primate eyes spied <laughs> out that snake in a split second. Excellent. Uh, you'll make <laughs> you'll make a good hunter gatherer. Yeah, I'll be safe in the forest. Yeah. So this next letter looks like this. It's kind of like the Gimel, except the Gimel um, has its leg up here. So it's more like a walking stick, or you can mm. depict it as 
yeah, I don't know, Gimli's dwarfish X, the Gimel. Whereas the Norn can I, is... Can I predict then that this will sound similar to the Gimel, if the glyphs are uh, alike? Uh, you you could make that prediction, but with as it is with the weather, sometimes it's wrong. <laughs> 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 just case, tell it's... me wh what does it sound like and i'll see if i can uh <laughs> so it's pronounced nun uh, yeah no it really doesn't doesn't uh doesn't work does it <laughs> no sorry <laughs> up until now this theory that the that there was similarity between glyphs implying similarity between sounds was was bulletproof and, yes. and now we just have to throw the whole idea out the window yeah, well, I mean, in this in this case, it's quite appropriate because it's the serpent, the you know, the king of chaos in a sense. Uh, yeah, and, the and perhaps the the most chaotic move the snake ever pulled was picking a glyph that looked like a G and then sounding like an N. <laughs> yes, uh, it's the Tower of Babel all over. But this this uh, this nun is related, apparently. It's so this nun is the Aramaic word. Which is also a Semitic language, but it's a north northeastern Semitic language, I think. Whereas Hebrew is a northwestern Semitic language. Um, and yeah, and so nun it means serpent. So in a in an Aramaic version of Genesis three, you could very well have had the word nun, but in our Genesis three, which is Hebrew, we've got the word nachash, and this we've we've heard Dorian speak about this. Um, to refer to Satan, Nachash, it can mean serpent, but it's also got connotations of kind of burnished or glowing quality and uh, as well as a diviner, which is a type of sorcerer that is spoken against in the law of Moses. So, so these things all, you know, come together to, to give us a bit of the idea that Satan was a bit like a wyvern or some, something along those lines, a glowing winged seraph. Nachash uh, is an incredible sounding word for, 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 some, for something evil. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Isn't great. Hmm. Yeah, so Nachash is, is, uh, is this letter. And uh, we in South Africa, we've, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Black Mamba. Hmm. But it can stand, I can't remember if it's one third or one quarter, it can stand on like one very small fraction of its of its tail and that would be what the final form of this uh, word looks like black mamba is mm. a black mouth but it's actually gray <laughs> but it's oh. called black mamba because of its mouth so yeah. anyway so so the final form of this word much like the cuff has a long tail and that's why i didn't want you to draw your your vav like this earlier because otherwise the vav can easily be confused with the the final form of the nun mm -hmm. So nun is much like the calf in that it's got it's got a foot on which it mm -hmm. stands, but then if it's at the end of the word, then that foot collapses and grows a, a tail. And this would be the Aramaic word for serpent, nun. Mm -hmm. I also n remember you pointing out the symbolism to us of the nail, and maybe there's something poetic in the fact that the the nail here when it reveals itself with the descender to actually Ooh. be a serpent the whole time. <laughs> yes, you'll strike your heel. Yes. I mean, you, yes. you will strike his heel, sorry. <laughs> yes, you, you'll I strike his head and he'll, he'll strike your heel. Crush, yes. crush the head. Right. Yes, <laughs> it depends who God's talking to there, I guess. Um, uh, talking to the sun or talking to the serpent. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's yeah. noon. And now it's up to you. Um, Back to my screen share. Yes, and, and you can also write another word that's important, another new word, which will be Thanks. great. Okay. Hit me. What's the letters? So it will be, well, for, for, do you want to first practice writing the, oh, the yes. first Let's the final do... form? Yeah, so here's, I think, the first form. Is that a fair nun, nun, nun? Yeah, looking good. And then something nun. Yes. <laughs> it's also the, the German word for now. 
coincidentally. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> uh, yes. So the, the, the word that I want you to write is it's Navi. The British word. It's the British word for let's stop and have some lunch. Oh. Then. Noon. Noon. Right. Well, tell me. <laughs> okay. What's the what's the first letter? <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, so noon would be the first letter. Snake. Yes. And then the vav. Uh, I mean, not vav, sorry, the beth. But it's a v sound. Oh, I can save it. <laughs> nice. And then the aleph. I just want to just double check. I haven't done one of those uh, for a while. And spelling a bit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Between the Beth and the Aleph, put a Yod. Oh, I could have fit that in. Yeah, you could. <laughs> nice. Yod. Okay. So this is a Navaya. Oh, hang on. That's... Aleph at the Navaya. Almost. That's very good. Um, if you think of, yo. have you have you watched the movie Avatar? Yes. Do you remember? No. Do you no? Do, do you remember the the people that are the same color as the back background of your paint screen there? What they were called? <laughs> um, <laughs> they were the. Uh, hmm, I will remember when you tell me. Okay. Navahim? No, no, the Navi. They were the Navi. Navi. Or you can think okay, of the Navy, which are also seafaring people. <laughs> so, th so this then is uh, Navayi. It's just Navi. Uh, so th Navi. there's some strange okay. vowel stuff going on here that I don't really know how to explain, except that they wanted to indicate that it's a... Um, it ends on a glottal stop, so it's probably just a short E sound at the end. Uh, v, yeah. um, but the odd indicates that it's an I sound as opposed to like an A or an E or something like that. Okay. Right. So these two are kind of just giving us vowel information. Yes, exactly. Together. That's very well, very well identified. That's very good. I like that. It's funny because. They're taking up exactly the same amount of space as perfectly useful consonant type letters up, up here. You know, upstanding. You know, <laughs> the, these guys are extending the length of the word and doing good solid days work, and these <laughs> busybodies are just stepping in at the last minute and trying to interfere with the perfectly good word. Okay. Uh, it's like the the workers in the vineyards. But I <laughs> yeah, can do with my money what I want just as much. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So um, if you add, you know now how to write a plural as well. Mm. So uh, yes, if you add the plural ending. Uh, was mem, I think, because it was like the C's and the mem was, oh, hang on, you almost caught me. Has <laughs> it got a different shape at the end of the letter? Uh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. That was a different one. Yeah, it does. It's this. Boop. Nice. Very good. <sighs> that, was okay, a, so, so, that was a difficult so, one. Yeah. These letters with, with are getting the, tough. Yes. With, with the plural endings, it's um, you always have to include the the yod to indicate the E sound as well. So you'll have to put yod mem to make sure that people see it's a plural. So Oh yes, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the it was the mem at the start, which by itself meant water, and then the yod mem is the plural ending, right? Yes, exactly. And uh, for this particular word, if I'm not mistaken, you can take out the yod in the middle now. Hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah. Just 
keep on walking. <laughs> and this this word would be pronounced nevi'im. So you can see that the, there's a bit of a change in the vocalization of the word when the word changes its form, which we'll get into mm. more later. But it's just a now bit I remember that Al Aleph here changed its pronunciation when it became kind of collided with another word before. So so you said nevi'im. Yes, and exactly. The fact that it's the fact that it's e. Previously, it was. E because of the yod, but now it's kind of the Aleph is changing its pronunciation, maybe anyway. Yeah, um, let me actually. Oh, I'm wrong. Okay, so so you could you didn't actually need to fill in the the yod, but you're correct with the Aleph being a pronounced a uh, glottal stop sound. So it's Navi im, and you can actually see it a lot better now. That's why I was like, wait a minute, I made a mistake. So yeah, you can actually recognize the, the three syllables. I don't know if you were to divide it into syllables, how would you do that? <clears throat> Just as a little exercise. Like na v im. Okay, so, would you do it with, with Oh, how would I how would I draw it? Like how yeah. would I split the characters up? Yeah. Uh so na v im. I mean, I was debating about putting it here. Yeah, I'd I'd put it there because the reason because I put it the... here was because I knew that this was a suffix. Yes, these these two letters. Um, but I can also see that it, if I didn't, if I hadn't been given that information, I would just naturally do it this way. Essentially, you've got each syllable is a consonant and a vowel, and in this case, it's the glottal stop as a consonant. Yeah, so so that it's another perfect opportunity to just indicate what here is an open um, syllable and what is a closed syllable because those walls mm. would be important. So what did you guess? M doesn't. It's not nevi e me. Like you you don't just pronounce an extra thing after the M. Does that make it a closed syllable? Yes, exactly. Perfect. So ne. Is one syllable, V is another syllable, <clears throat> they're both open. And then mm. im is a closed syllable because it's got the uh at the beginning and the m at the end, and then a vowel in the middle. And so would you theoretically pronounce this as nem? Yes. If it was a word, you know. It might even yeah. be a word, but I can't think of it now. But yeah, nem. Okay. And that would be a closed syllable because it yep. ends with a consonant. Yeah, I'm thinking of the Persian, but that's let's not mix up the. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't think it's a Hebrew word. Uh, anyway, no, let's let's move on to the the next letter though. Although maybe yeah, if if you're still willing, I don't know how how much stamina you have left. Um, yeah, no, let's let's roll on. Because that would be uh, the fourth letter, and then this would be the fifth letter before we get to the final uh, quintet or whatever you want to call it. This letter, this one's interesting. Um, it's oops, I've, I've closed the wrong thing here. So this letter is is called Samech. Oh, let's just uh, quickly answer this question from chat. Is the Jewish tradition the first to depict serpents as evil? Other Ooh. older traditions like Egyptian religion seem to depict them as divine. Um, I'm going to take issue here and say that Ju Judaism existed at the creation of the world. So <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to call that another tradition older than Judaism, although I've heard some interesting arguments that I might consider that Moses was writing the Old Testament in response to other religions that were already established at the time of writing. Um, so maybe that's a more charitable way to <laughs> talk about this. But uh, in terms of the Garden of Eden is talking about the serpent as the creature that um, doomed mankind. And I would say that the 
I don't think there were other traditions. I don't think there were even other humans around at that point. So um, maybe that's yeah. m m maybe that's a an answer um, that people so, would disagree with. But so what what I would say to that, I, I wouldn't fully disagree. I don't know if I would disagree with anything you've said, but um, but I do think that Egypt has a particular history that is also portrayed in the Bible. So the Egyptians are, are known for writing down everything. They literally wrote down everything on any surface they could get their hands on almost. <laughs> so they're a very like literal, literate culture um, in contrast to the others. In the, the kind of Persian Gulf, those are almost as literate, I guess. And and then again, the, the Indus Valley also has a lot of this kind of stuff. I feel like Much. the Egyptians had the advantage of living in a desert where th th there's less, maybe there's less damage and erosion going on of the things that they wrote on. Yeah, well, that, that's that's one part of it, I think. But but also there is a lot of um, at least intertestamental literature and also then the Hebrew literature, right, which um, speaks about Egypt as being very much intertwined with sorcery and and uh, deities that are in rebellion with God. And so if they positively attribute, or if they give positive attributes to things that are in the Bible, given negative attributes, then it might also just be because they're also involved in um, mm. certain practices that are that are aligned with the forces that scripture refers to as chaotic and uh, so evil. So wherever you read something in the Old Testament as being a positive thing, you, f you find the same thing described in ancient literature outside the Hebrew tradition, but, but instead of being described positively, it's described negatively. <laughs> in and some cases. Versa. Yes. Okay. So you also said that um, the Jewish, the Jewish religion was there in the Garden of Eden. I don't know if I would quite, I don't even know if they would say it in the same way, because the name Jewish comes from Yehuda, who's one of the brothers of Joseph. So, and so he's one of the tribes of Israel. Hmm. So, so they were Israelites before they were Jews. They were Jews more or less after they were in the exile. That's interesting. So do you, yeah. do you not think that the um, fear of snakes it has has existed in humanity, uh, you know, fr from the the inception, inception, you know, from from the Garden <laughs> of Eden? Um, do you think that's a post um, ju post Judah? kind of um, learned uh, phobia of, of snakes oh, then? No, no. I, so I think there's there's like a base uh, vocabulary or, or base understanding of reality, which is shared throughout the ancient world, which is very interesting to observe. Because now nowadays, that doesn't seem very much to be the case. Um, mm. Maybe it points so I... back to a kind of linguistic unification of <laughs> of the more ancient people but they they were definitely more attuned to reality i think in a, a lot of ways and so they conceptualized mm. reality in similar terms around the inhabited or the civilized world anyway for, this, about which we have records the, so, so I, sorry I, so so to just get, yeah. get to the point was that um i think i think the whole the fear of serpents begins with or the enmity against serpents begins in genesis 3 but I, don't, I wouldn't classify that as Jewish. I would classify that as human. And then the Egyptians are, are known for snake charming, for example, in, in the records uh, in, in the ancient times already. So, mm. so they're very closely associated with serpents, and serpents also become a, a symbol for their, for their kings and pharaohs so that they eventually have, I mean, the, the pharaohs have the serpent, either the one or the two, I think, depending on the time period on, on the... The brow of their crown and so on so so from a biblical perspective they are more associated with the the old serpent <laughs> um than many other peoples but babylon is also so babylon and egypt are these two big antagonists of yahve hmm. yeah. that's interesting yeah that's a way of looking at it i hadn't thought about i guess my um what I was what I was trying to assert was that where there are a plethora of ancient myths that explain hatred of snakes, the biblical one is the real one, 
and and the others are not. I guess that that's <laughs> what I was trying to hint towards. Um, but I suppose what you're perhaps saying is actually that where other ancient cultures have um, have a, a a god, that god may be a uh, reflection of uh, uh, an understanding that they are following the same snake, as it were, from the Garden of Eden. So, so their gods being linked symbolically to uh, uh, Old Testament ideas doesn't make them f um, factually false. It might make them sort of morally false. Yes. Yeah, I like that. I, okay. I also think that's why I think that's why one doesn't need to date. I've been looking into it a bit recently, and I find it a bit strange the, the way people date or try to date um, just by looking at the writing style and so on of of the five books of Moses, for example. They try to date them into like the into the exile time period, <laughs> so that mm. the people in the exile that had that were trying to maintain their identity quickly began to copy down all of this oral tradition that that they had before. Which we see happening as well after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, which is, I think, where some of these theories are that people, scholars, hypothesize then because they see it in that in that part of history, and then they're like, "Oh, then that must have happened back here and in the exile as well." That's how we can explain the Pentateuch or something like that. Um, whereas the there aren't any explicit extra biblical sources or, or witnesses that speak against what the five books of Moses say. And mm. I think as well that, it, I mean, the way in which the five books of Moses speak is very enlightened, is very kind of demythologizing in its character, because it does speak about the ocean as something that is under God's command. Whereas other cultures would have seen it as as a deity, <laughs> or it speaks mm. about the sun and the moon and the stars as something that is subordinate to God, despite the fact that he puts them in their place in order to rule over the seasons and the earth and so on. Um, so they are kind of personified, but they're not given the same status as other deities. And so with this perspective, Yahweh is given ultimate uh, status, but the other gods are still recognized as as existing but not as on the same level as the true god namely yahweh in the old mm. testament and so so there's a kind of quality to the i don't know to the old testament which is like we know who the real god is and that's why we can recognize other things with a more honest perspective and i think that's also why it has endured throughout the ages in contrast to other mythological um works because it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I, 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 I'm quite persuaded by the concept that there was a dialogue going on between the Israelites and the surrounding culture. And for example, when it talks about, um, oh, in in this was it happened in the days when giants were around. Mm. When we read that, we're a bit like, what? <laughs> <We're> giants? <laughs> um, would would love a little more detail on that, please. But. Yeah. What it sounds like is, oh, whoever you are reading this, you already have uh, an understanding of the world that there was this period with with a bunch of giants. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm just giving you our unique additional perspective on what was going, what what happened. You know, I'm I'm just dating it within that. It would be like if I said to you, um, oh, this text that I'm studying was contemporary with Henry VIII. And I don't explain who Henry VIII is. You just, you just know. So I don't bother. <laughs> yeah. And and I've I've heard even secular scholars talking about the fact that, um, it's, it, the, there's good reason to think the flood narrative being shared with it, like it doesn't it appear in the Epic of Gilgamesh and various other places, and 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 they will say, well, a, a pretty strong contender for why this appears in all these places is that it actually happened in some some form. There was a giant flood, and that has more explanatory power in some ways than one of these copied from the other and edited. Yeah, I I, I like that. I would agree with that, I think. <laughs>
Sorry, I've, I've kept you from Samek for far too long. Yes, no, well, it's good. Now we've maybe had a bit of time to refresh ourselves and then, or to, to take a bit of a break from all of these new letters. Uh, well, yeah. I keep closing this. Enough wrong time to, to forget them all. Yeah, exactly. Or to, to give your mind the incubation period necessary. To, <laughs> it was a backwards to... C. It was a, <laughs> it was a bunch of ones that changed when they ended up at the end of letters. That's what I've got so far. Yeah. So so for this one, uh, we all know the curse of S, I imagine. It, yeah, it's, it's fancy. I never write it like that. But yeah. Okay. But, but did you learn it at school? No, no but I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's, uh, that's kind of the curse of S and that that's one of the first things I had to think about when I learned Samech because it is similar to, so we had the final mem, which is more of a oh, block. Well, I, I actually, I, let me show you how I was taught to write an S at school. So oh. I suppose it was a S would be like this, right? Uh, but okay. But you're saying like in a slightly fancier kind of, Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. So this was the mem, the final mem. The. The samech looks similar, but I just want to emphasize the fact that it's it's a bit more, rounded or a bit more. Angular. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can imagine it almost looking like a heart or something, but it's. Yeah. So it's a bit more rounded. And in a way, it's, it's, it's like a square and a triangle. Yeah. And this is a, an S sound. So, so you can practice that one. Is the, is it a, is it a heart? Is that, didn't we have one that was a heart already? Was uh, Mem a heart? No. No, no, we learned the word for heart. Now I'd be interested. Uh, it began that... with your favorite letter. Oh, yes. L -l -l med. Yes. Wow, you even remembered. <sighs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're quickly approaching some kind of buffer overflow situation with my brain. But uh, we've, at the moment, we've, we've got a little RAM left over. Hey, we've got <laughs> a, fun, a fun fact from Cringe Walker. Yes. Um, the Bible's slave laws directly quote and invert the slave laws of Hammurabi. It was a clear dialogue, and he says, "Happy to stream on that topic." Oh, you know what, Chris well, Walker, nice. you've you've lured me with so many excellent <laughs> ideas for streams. I just can't pick. <laughs> but but yes, we we will arrange a stream next week, and I will let you choose one or even a multiplicity of topics because. I, I just, I, I want, I, I kind of want to know about everything that you've offered to me as a stream topic and I can't, I can't choose. So um, yes, let's do it. Let's definitely stream together. Um, LaRue wants to also know how you fund all these super chats. Uh, I, I, I don't care because, um, you know, it's just, you uh, just get money, the money in my pocket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, so this is, uh, oh no, wait, it was Samech. That's the idea. What am I saying? Oh, but that's, uh, I can't think of a word for, for Samech. Anyway, so Samech is. So all the Samech the words letter. have other letters in from the end of the alphabet. The um, Aleph, Bet, Veth. You, you're trying to think of a word which ha has a Samech in it. And yes. all the ones you can think of also contain letters I haven't learned yet. Yeah, well, some some of them. I'm trying to think of I think savav, which is to turn around, has a samich. Yes, I think it does. Okay, so we can do this. Is like the word for heart, um, or to, this is to like revolve in a sense. Ah, savav. Like like repent. No, no, that is, that would be shuv. Here's a letter I haven't learned yet. Uh, also has a beth in it. Shuv. Shuv. Yes. Well, okay. Uh, sorry, it's actually, it's also got three letters. We spoke about how the the words always have three letters in them. This has the vav in the middle, shuv, as a hollow a hollow root, but sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, so shuv, shuv is to repent, but you haven't, you haven't gotten there yet. Savav is to just turn, to like 
vert yourself <laughs> to root to i don't know to turn <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah so that's a word you can great no your your turn <laughs> to, to, to write survive yes and the and, and uh and samech the letter okay yeah let's start with just the letter so it starts like the capital oh and it, it doesn't really start like it sorry the shape didn't turn out quite how i had in mind because of this trackpad i do have a track a, a proper um right the drawing tablet somewhere if i if i dig it out these streams will be a lot better so i really ought to do it how are these pretty good that's perfect so now you can write sabav just Wait. as a reminder the, the word for heart was uh levev or lev which has a similar structure and um Hang on, Sav. Oh, did you say it was a Beth yes. in the middle? So it's yep. a, f it, it's a, f a, a v rather than a v. Yes. If, if you can hear the difference there. <laughs> uh, that's not so subtle. Important, I think. Yeah. Do you think, like, presumably there is a distinction in modern Hebrew as well between um, the pronunciation of a, of a Beth and a, have. I don't think so. No, but I'm not sure. No, I think in, in modern Hebrew, a lot of a lot of the pronunciation has has simplified. Uh, if okay. this historical pronunciation is even true, <laughs> like it is, uh, it is a reconstruction based on the on the evidence um, in texts. But the pronunciation of language tends to always change. Uh, that's pretty well recorded so it's quite likely that it used to historically be pronounced differently to how it is today okay so is that right yeah that's savav savav he turned he turned or he spun about what? and and then now do you put a different vowel somewhere to change it to the feminine is that how you do it Yes, uh, or not vowel, but um, so savav is he turned, and if you just put an H a here at the end of the word, then it then it's feminine. But now you see not no, bigger <laughs> because it's, it's Yeah, it would it would be there's there's something that happens here that I'm not entirely sure on oh, okay. because I read Hebrew more than I write it, <laughs> um, and. I'm sure something would happen so that maybe it would turn into Sava or something instead of Savava. <laughs> okay. Um, you think this might get deleted? Yeah, because uh, okay. if if you've got a double or a, a, a repeated consonant, then that has consequences. <laughs> Just like okay. if you've got a weak a weak consonant hmm. uh, or a guttural. Gutturals, weak consonants, and 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 double consonants mm. like this there are a couple of words like this in hebrew um mm. and then hollow roots which would be a word like shuv which we haven't come across yet they they have consequences to the fact that they're built up a little bit differently um yeah but if you add the h to the end then it would be she so we had the word kavad kavad mm. if you write that then we can start making a sentence Okay. Oh no. Is that it? Yep. So that would be he he was heavy. Okay. Is past tense the default form for verbs? Yes, so the, the simplest form, yeah. If you want okay. to turn it into the present future tense, the imperfect tense, the imperfect. Then, then you would add to the front of it. And that's why, so we can call it the imperfect, but there's debate as to whether or not that's correct, strictly speaking, well, because it's a Semitic language, not a Latin language. Yes, 
but but imperfect in a Latin language is past kind of continuous, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And so that that word has just been like misappropriated. It does so yeah. imperfect. Just, if you have, yeah, we we've just taken a word that has grammatical meaning and used it to mean something completely <laughs> different in a different language. Well, well, in in <laughs> Latin, for ex for example, in Latin, if you've got like ambulabam, ambulo is I walk, ambulabam oh. is I was walking. Yeah. It does still indicate a sense of continuity or a sense of imperfection like the action hasn't been completed yet whereas um I'm, i think it's ambulawit or something would be no ambulawi would be i walked and that that's perfect that's complete i walked it's done but i was walking still has the sense of incompleteness and what, what yeah. about present and present continuous like uh, i walk and i am walking so in hebrew you would use a participle for that and okay. uh in the, distinguishing in the between of... the two present tenses isn't that a pretty unusual english feature i, I think there's not that many languages which bother I, I, yeah I once it i was a bit confused when i was confronted with it recently <laughs> So um, I should look into that a bit more. Actually, I'm not so I'm not so sure about that. I I do know that if you want to emphasize that present aspect, then like he is writing, he's sitting at his desk, he's busy writing right now. Then you would say something like, um, uh, "Kotev, who Kotev or something." He is busy writing at this moment. Mm. Katav is to write. But anyway, let's let's. Uh, but a, a mistake like saying I play tennis when you're on the court currently explaining what you're doing is one of the most common for you know ESL speakers around from wherever they've come from that's a, it's a <laughs> very very frequent mistake i've heard okay it's interesting anyway so so kavad would be um he is heavy but if you add a, a hair at, to the end of it then it would be she was heavy sorry she was heavy mm -hmm. so that he would, would be so keva uh, ke is it Kava? Kavad? Ka uh, yes, Kavad is he was heavy. Kavada? Yeah. She was heavy? Yep. Yeah. So so she was heavy. Um, now the question is who? And I want to teach you another very important word. Uh, New line? Or you can put it next to next to cover okay. there. There's still some space there. You can shift up the hair if you want to be a bit closer to cover. Um, but so cover there, and then the question is, well, who was heavy? Uh, and then you can say ha, so the definite article. Mm, is it going to be mother? Oh, oh, you could, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so wanna, let's let's do that. I don't so miss out on the other important word. No, no, no. You will get there then. Okay. That, this is actually better. So ha, and then alef mem would be im. Ha, ha almost caught me. Im, and then oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, what? You oh, now you now you tell me there's another letter. You're, Yes, yeah, sorry. There's there's a, another letter, but that was really good that you got the final mem right right in the go. I actually made that mistake recently, and then someone pointed it out to me, and I was so ashamed <laughs> <laughs> that I I forgot to put the final mem. But I was trying to write on my keyboard, so I feel like I have an excuse. But anyway, so uh, and then it would be an a hair at the end again, and that's a, a classical marker for a feminine. A noun as if it ends on an ah sound and so this mm. is ha ima and that's so she was heavy the mother, the mother. and then ima. Ima. Yeah. no imach just ima yeah you, you don't need to yeah. pronounce Do a the breath. h too much yeah because the, the the word ending with an h versus ending with an aleph is pretty difficult to distinguish Oh, actually, this is pretty good. If you so delete the last H, and then put, and then complete this this word for me. If I say it's 
your mother was heavy your mama <laughs> <laughs> she, is this you you've brought me far enough to do your, your mama jokes in hebrew yeah in hebrew yeah. <laughs> this, <laughs> that was unintentional but this is uh it's all divine providence <laughs> okay <laughs> let me let me think um so your as opposed to because it was a um what uh what's it something suffix the the when it's um like standing in place of a person pronominative something pronominal like suffix yeah very good pronominal very good. suffix yeah um so it goes at the end mm -hmm. and in this case it replaces does it the the hair Yes, so a hair is a weak. That's a weak. Uh, it's weak. <laughs> a weak Easily gets knocked consonant. out by other suffixes. Yeah. Well, it is weak. You can't even hear it. it yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I'm struggling to remember. Did I learn a your? Can you give me a clue? Uh, so it's, it was the final cuff. If you remember uh, okay. that, and then we had cavo. Uh, we had cavo dech, which is. If you're speaking to woman, your glory, the your glory. <laughs> um, and if you're speaking to a man, then it's your glory, but to a man. And in this case, it's would be oh mama, if you're saying it to a guy. Um, uh, so would be your mother is heavy. Ah, actually, I want to. Can, so, can you shift that whole thing down? Yeah. Oops. Uh, select. Yeah. Oh, now you told me last time if I change the color. I'm I'm not just learning Hebrew here. I'm learning <laughs> advanced paint. Yeah. And then, what? Well, before you do that, sorry. Actually, move the kavoda back to the top, but we'll need. To put a different word next to it. So basically, what I what I want you to do is begin the sentence with kavoda, and then we need the word another word, and then oh no, or cover that. My darling went a little awry. Perfect. And then and then next to that, put the word. Uh... <laughs> Matt's enjoying the sentence you chose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This you can read it like that if you want. But anyway, um, oops, there's the ambulance. So cover that, cover or cover that. Um, I, if I ever do a, a meetup of Lambda Bible studies, then I expect everyone to greet one another with this Hebrew <laughs> phrase. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so uh, probably, probably a probably a comment of um great affection and commendation in in jewish culture i imagine <laughs> so I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> say i know much about that but so so <laughs> say um halev i mean right halev i'm sure you can figure that one out if it's starting with a ha huh, must be that and then ha lev that that's my little Yep. That's a <laughs> Lamed. Yep. And then a, now there's two options here. It could either be a Vav, but I'm going to plump for a Beth. Nice. Yeah. So we had the word Levev earlier. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what it was potentially? Uh, Levev was. No. I mean, if I sat here for sixty seconds, I'd recall it. But uh, <laughs> it, put it the means heart. Ah, uh, yes. Heart. And then you you asked if it was connected to ahava somehow. So yeah. So, so yeah. So, so, so like this. Yeah, you could write that as well. I think is heart. <clears throat> is that right? Yes. Yeah. Either way, it's heart. Whether it's one. Beth or two. Oh, the one might really? be 
Yeah, so actually leave it like this because this might be the construct state, which is needed to indicate that. Anyway, we'll get into that a bit later. But so, so the heart is what you've written there, and yeah, uh, uh, okay. So this is with with a heavy heart, almost. Well, not with. Then you'd have to add a um, a Beth to the beginning <laughs> of uh... with a heavy heart. Oh. Right. Yeah, you see, I th yeah, really. with with heaviness of the heart. Yes, um, probably also an anachronistic expression. But yeah, it might be. But uh, I do feel like his heart was heavy. I've I've seen. But there's no, certainly his face was pure, fallen, pure heart, heart, isn't there? There's like yeah. clean heart. I, th I think this. I think this works. <laughs> Let's just say it works. Kavza, <laughs> uh, Halev. And then you can delete the second kavtha because we don't need it repeated. Um, but haimcha would be. Uh, I don't. I don't have a delete button on my uh, in my wireless keyboard. Oh dear. So let's try cut. Ah, it works. Perfect. And then you can you can shift up the haimcha. So another thing to note here that's important is the definite article. It has to agree with. The lev, so it's halev ha imcha would be the heart of your mother. So heavy was the heart of your mother, or heavy is the heart of your ma heavy was the heart of your mother. So heavy was the heart, and then are you saying now mother? Uh, is this the of the mother? Is that right? Yes. This, yeah. So this actually means heavy was the heart of the mother. Of but you. we've got of you. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Fine. But that's pretty good. I mean, do you, can... do you do you need a an article if you just wanted to? If for for example, suppose you had multiple mothers. Now this probably doesn't isn't how it would have been thought about in Hebrew culture, but. Uh, no, you, you could say like halev ha, ha ime, I think. Hmm. So if one of your mothers had a heavy heart, then you just or don't imoth. you just delete the half the ha. If one then you would also have to say uh lev im ha. So hev, heavy yeah. was a heart of a mother, of your mother. Oh, but it, but oh, you see that doesn't it also doesn't really work because of the um the pronominal suffix at the end automatically makes it definite because it's specifically okay. your your mother. Mm. In which case, I actually wonder if you need to put the definite article. See, I'm I'm also getting to the limits of my written okay. Hebrew knowledge here. But but we're flexing our our ability yeah. to write letters we're... first and foremost. <laughs> exactly. This is a questionable character here. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so. So the, the is, heart. I yeah. don't think anybody's going to watch through these streams and also already have perfect Hebrew because why would they? <laughs> well, we'll we'll get to if the they, perfect. If Hebrew they are, problem. then they can correct us in the comments. Yes. Um, right. So, so heavy was the heart of your mother, hmm. and then, and then you can say. Um, you can write, so this is a new, um, what's it called? Clause. This is a causal clause or a, uh, resultative clause actually. So, so what you'll write here is the word key. I'll leave it up to you to, to try and figure out how to write that. Uh, Key, perfect, yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's see, you know Hebrew. Um, yeah. What I what I forgot to mention is that kaf also oh. has a soft pronunciation, which is uh -huh. the the sound that you say at the end of bach, for okay. example. So, if so it uh, doesn't have a dot in it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The this is how it wakes sound. people up. Who anybody who's falling asleep <laughs> listening to this stream, so apologies. This it was like the surprise symphony. <laughs> nice. It was a hidden Bach 
at the end. <laughs> the Kath yeah. hard pronunciation is 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 that no, not not the nice soft. What have we had so far? <laughs> or or the glottal <laughs> stop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is key. <clears throat> so key means because so heavy is the heart of your mother because uh, and then write sus. Oh, that was um, uh, the snake. No, that's an, that's just an S in English. <laughs> the snake was an N. Uh, the S was the S, the heart one, the one that was shaped like this. Yes, exactly. Uh, what was the word again? Sus. Now, I think, was it Vav that made an oo sound? Yes, exactly. Perfect. What a and guy. then just another Sus. one of these. Yeah. See, I've remembered a word with some. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Very good. Oh, you okay. can actually even say uh, Susim because of the horses. Ah, Susim, uh, oh, which is a mem and a mem at the end of the word. Oh, is pretty similar to the <laughs> to the the S that I just drew. What's the name of this letter again? Uh, Samech. 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 So yes, I probably should have been more careful in drawing this Samech to distinguish. Yeah, but it, it it's fine because it's, it's very because it's, it's not at the end of the word then. In this case, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that's right. But until you added this suffix, then I was in trouble. Yeah, but also the remember the e sound uh, kind of often makes use of the yod. So yod. And what does this mean? Uh, so 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 sim would be samech vav samech yod mem instead of ah. just samech mem. Yeah. So this so, is a plural of a new word yes exactly and sus means horse <laughs> it was one of the hey. first sounds that i learned actually perhaps the horses had died or perhaps the horses had arrived and um it was the father who ordered them and the, mo the mother wasn't too happy <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, actually, yeah you can well we can add a uh, i was just going to say because of the horses of this next big word or because of some horses, it's not defined. Sorry, I would always say that, but it's actually just some horses because of some horses. Um, the next, the final word, the most important word would be ha melech. Okay. Ha. Mm, hang on. Me, me. Like that? No, 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 it was Hamelech. Hamelech. Oh. But nice uh, try. Nice. I, I misheard. Yeah. <laughs> ha me lech. Was that or <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just once more, right into the microphone for the yeah. life of our viewers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. this is, so this um, is the... Um... Oh, no, it has a final form. Uh, does it? It's this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> final form. But but like the dialect, it has a... It's important to have the, uh, the roof kind of going off the, the oh. right-hand side of the, of the tail. Yes, exactly. That's perfect. Okay. Be um, because if it has that roof, it's a cath. And if it doesn't, it's a... Um, oh, now I've forgotten which which letter this was. Uh, I think this one changed quite significantly and didn't look anything like this in its non-final form. Is that, is that true? <laughs> I've, uh, I've lost the plot. That's also a cuff, but oh. yeah, I, I didn't actually register that you hadn't 
drawn it okay. correctly. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. It, it so, might also so there be is, nice. If there isn't the one that goes like this. That just doesn't uh, exist. No. Or I haven't learned it yet. The final form of the nun almost looks like that, but it's got a much shorter uh, head. Okay, maybe that's where I was getting confused then. Yeah. yeah, that probably was it. Yes, I see. So the noon is that. Yeah. And then the cat is that. Yes, exactly. It, it's also better if you if you keep the tails relatively straight. They're allowed to curve a little bit for aesthetic effect, but, <laughs> but uh... I like it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that's fine. Then it's also recognizable. So <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've you've written a sentence. Can you? Um... Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> that was a. I don't know what this guy chat. is talking about. Yeah. I was like, "Whoa, have we been discovered?" Anyway, um, yeah, but but so can you read the sentence and can you translate oh, it? You can try also and translate. Put the, yeah, and you can put the full yeah. stuff that colon looking thing at the end yes. of the sentence. That would also be good. Yeah, the sentence is. Multiple lines, multiple <laughs> sizes of letters. <laughs> <laughs> this, this extra line is accidental. Let's get rid of it. Oh no, it's getting worse. <laughs> how do I how do I draw in the second? Oh, do I have to right click? Yeah, I can't right. do that with this trackpad. Oh goodness. Oh, that's not going to work either. <laughs> All right, look. Let's just um. Yeah, you can use the eraser that. as well. It's going to make it white, isn't it? Oh, it may, yeah, it makes it the secondary color. I'm going to have to break out another book for paint tips. <laughs> nice. Uh, it might be the you know the main thing that sticks with me. Right, let's recap. Oh, did you tell me, or did you tell me what this word was, or did I already know it? Uh, it means king, the king in this case, Melech. Okay. So, yeah. And it's in the it's name Alchis Melchizedek Melchizedek I think or Melchizedek, which is Melchizedek. I'm trying to remember the the, the guy pronunciation. who lived for absolutely ages. The guy, so he's the the king of Salem. Oh no, the in Abraham's the, the one, the one who, um, is like, um, you don't even know the elementary things. How am I supposed to talk to you about? Is that? Yeah. Is that yeah, the well, in, so in, in Hebrews, yes, yeah, Christ the priesthood is... is the priesthood of Melchizedek. He does come and out in Hebrews. Well. Isn't there theories that Melchizedek might have been a theophany, or is that just yes. completely off the wall? Yeah, a Christophany, even so, it's a, a pre-incarnate manifestation of Christ. Hmm. That's that's one of the things. I know one of the books of Enoch speak about him being born from a virgin. Was I thinking of the... Methuselah? Methuselah got yeah. is the oldest man. Enoch is the one who who God took up into heaven with himself. Yeah. Um, so was yes. So you you were saying that the word king is inside of Melchizedek's name, which would be quite fitting given that he has this at least strongly typical um, significance, and yeah, may it, in fact be Christ. Yeah, his his name literally means uh, righteous king. So anyway, so Melech is king. Okay, so so, so I, I'll just say f from remembering us decoding it as we go along, I think this means that your mother's heart was heavy because of the horses of the king. Um, because of some horses of the king. Some Just horses some of the horses. king. Yeah, is it worth not... going through and decoding it piece by piece again as a recap? Um, I, or should I think we leave that nice. as an exercise? Could, could you, do you think it would be too much to, to try no, and no, no. read through I, it in I, Hebrew? I, I, I'm up for it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Shall I, shall I speak, talk out loud as I try to um, decode it? Yes. Even though yeah, I know what that. the finish line is. So that, that makes walk, it easy. Walk us through it. You, you can I'll also try, scroll I'll try not to cheat. And... Okay. Oh yeah, what color should we go for? How about uh, this light green? How does that look? Lovely, unreadable. 
Yeah, red does I think a lot more. Yeah, uh, the more trouble more. is my background color is now kind of mid tone, so that was a yeah. that was a usability mistake. Having <laughs> well, I don't know. You want high high contrast for readability, but then also, mm. as I understand it, you, some people have trouble reading if the contrast is too. Yes. So well, there, there uh, isn't red? Oh, I guess yeah. That's also with color blindness and so on. That's a bit like red and green are mm. somehow difficult so. to distinguish. I mean, the real trick to accessibility is adding adding options. But uh, I mean, write in chat what colors you want us to use. We've got few enough viewers that we can we can literally accommodate. Okay, so Chavada, and I think was was this a pronomial suffix? The ha here or not? No, it it could have been, but it, it's in this case it isn't. In, in this case it isn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is this just a four-letter word, or is the ha a um, a prefix? So so kavad would have been Ka he is heavy. He was heavy. Sorry. Okay, kavad would have been he is heavy. Oh yes, this is the feminine. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a it's not a pronomy and suffix, but it is a suffix. So you kind yeah. of uh, <laughs> tricked me there. Okay, uh -huh. so let's. Um, is it the soft sound is ka, and then the hard sound is ha? No, no, it's, the hard sound is ka. Okay. So, so you can think of it in terms of continuity. The k, you can only say it once. It's unvoiced in terms of it being voiced or not in a in a way. Or aspirated, aspirated, and maybe. fricative. No, I think yeah. I think unvoiced because the okay. voiced version of ka is ga, as in gimel. I think. Yeah. So, but but this would be an unvoiced. Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, it's like a like palatial, palatial guttural kind of thing. It's between the palate and the. But it's a k. It's not. Um, yeah. It's it's it doesn't have continuity, whereas would be the, the one that has that's aspirated or something. Got a request to learn Hebrew colors. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's uh, those, that those, yeah, be... those would be nice to learn. Uh, yeah. Especially, I'd be interested to know like are certain colors considered in as uh, uh, you know uh, are certain colors you know for, formed from more basic and and therefore likely to be more. Oh. Kind yeah, of early is... emergent colors, something like this. Yeah. Kavath to be heavy, then feminine. Okay, first word decoded. And then halav. Hal halav. And if you think of nouns having a different oh. vowel usually, Hel halav. Yeah, so it, it would still be halav. The house oh, yeah, okay. stays kind of the same in this case, but that's, that's how, good. Hello. How do I know in, in a noun which vowels have the e? Uh, it's usually all of all but of them, but the, well, not in this case. The no, not, well, the the ha is the definite article, so that. The oh, okay, is, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the so you can see quite a few. ha doesn't change, even though it's attached to. Well, I guess it's always attached to a noun because you can't put the you can't put the definite article on anything except a noun. So, yeah. Halev, the mother. Is that right? Your mother, yeah. Oh, How would you? Is oh, sorry. Yes. What was which is the article for the? Oh, it's the same one. Yes, is it? exactly. Yeah. But, be, but because the mother just means your mother. Yes, mother of you. Yeah, that's the. Mm. Okay, so then we've got the, as in ha, and then we've got uh, asach. Almost, but the, it's not an. It's not a, As... a samech. It's a mem. But they do look so. Oh, uh, is it amech? Almost, almost. Im, imcha. 
or it would oh. be it would be emech if it's if you're speaking to a woman so the okay. part of I, your mother's I, ha. I, yeah. okay it's, so how would you, you you'd put in a yod or something to put this put the vowel after the mem would you uh no no this i'll show you later on how to put it ah, fine they, fine they do <laughs> so it's, okay. it's, this is pretty intense stuff that you're doing right now. This is high level, but it's a good mental exercise, <laughs> maybe to to get you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm aware. I'm asking questions about things that <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of delving into topics which are deep enough that I, you know I can't possibly be covering them systematically. But yeah, <laughs> nice to explore. Yeah. So th this is. Um, Hef, so heart, I th think the heart. This, so this was your mother, or, or which one? Which one are you looking at now? He, um, uh, um, ha. Yes, Haim Ha is is your mother, the mother of you. Oh, Alev so, was so, the heart. So, oh yes, heavy heart, mother. Okay, sorry, I had. No, no, this is good. Like to be completely honest, wrong. you are like way <laughs> ahead. <laughs> like we are really stretching the the boundaries here. But I, but I think it's yeah. it'll be interesting so... to see if that develops. <laughs> and then this is the word that means because. <laughs> yes. Put Paul would probably, uh, you know, this was probably his first word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He. Or what? Or key, key, I guess. Yes. Or key, key, yeah. Key, yeah. And then the okay, so four four letters. So immediately I'm thinking probably only three of these are the oh, it's actually five letters. That's because it's got the eem suffix, meaning exactly. many. Yes. And and then it's C V. V mem, something like that. It's uh, it's seem. Oh, because the valve is just working as the u, so it's yes, su mem, su seem. Yeah, that, that, so it does Su look like a mem, but that that last. Oh, because I drew it wrong. <laughs> I, I was I was complaining at the time that I should have been more careful how I drew this, and as, as exactly as I predicted, somebody me misread it as a, as a mem. <laughs> I just fell in my own go. trap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm literally, you know, I'm taking my own medicine for being a poor scribe. So, <laughs> su Sam. Did you say? Susim. Su yeah. Su Susim. Oh, uh, yeah. The yod is is an like an e. Yeah. Okay, and this meant horses, right? S yes, exactly. Sus so meaning horse, and susim meaning horses. Yeah. And then another the. And then this meant king, I seem to remember. And it is a mem, a um, lamed, and a cat. Kath, what was it? Kath with a ph Kath. sound. Yeah. Or f sound at the end. Kath. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, ha melech. Yes, exactly. Oh man, that's that's great. It's one of my favorite <laughs> words. So, so uh, um, melech, uh, uh, and you said melech is in the middle of um, Melchizedek. Yes, exactly. Yeah, presumably, it's actually, it, it should have been anglicized into Melchizedek. Yeah. Melk yeah. So Melchizedek means uh, my king is righteous. Actually, that's what it means. Melchi what about um, my king? Yeah. Wasn't there a an um a Melech 
that, that a false like an I a, a false god that people were sacrificing to. Moloch, yes, and his his Malach. name is also Moloch. Um, okay, uh, Malach, but a, a false Malach. king, I assume, in some way. Yeah, his name is related to <clears throat> to the word king. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Or ruler. Oh, that was fun. Okay. Yeah. I I I really enjoy doing these sentence decodings. <laughs> you give you, you give me just the right level of feedback because um, I'm sure it's tempting to jump in quicker and and help me out. But you you, you let me uh, you know go. You, you give me just just enough hints so it's it's very enjoyable. That was it's very impressive. I think that you're able to to, to get this far this quickly. I mean, we haven't even finished the alphabet, but you're already already writing sentences. Oh my goodness! The the later letters in alphabets are uh, <laughs> always yeah. overrated. Yeah. I, I I had a theory that in all languages the letters at the beginning of the alphabet are more commonly used, but I've not checked this at all. Um, yeah, in in the case of Hebrew, I don't think it's true because there's the case. there are some, some key letters, letters still to come. <laughs> oh well, I'm good. To, I'm glad to hear. Also, that was kind of implied by the fact that you were still struggling to find letters containing the samach, and I was surprised because in English, if you you know if you've got half the alphabet and you wanted to add another letter, then you you you'd almost certainly be able to make words. I feel. Yeah, well, my Maybe Hebrew vocab might also just be limited, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, but there's also another s sound in in Hebrew, so okay. and it's identical. So 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 there's like a dedicated <laughs> s sound, and then there's another s sound that's that shares the <laughs> sh sound. So okay. but we'll get there. We've got some uh, of that you... going on in English as well, haven't we? We've got like duplicate letters, <laughs> almost. Yeah, a little bit. Could right. could you switch back to my my screen and then and then we could maybe just recap the letters um, that mm -hmm. we learned today, please. Uh, so maybe or just maybe all of them quickly. So we've we've had Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalit, He, and then we had Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, and then today we learned. I don't know, for some reason I always get strike a blank in these moments where it really matters. But anyway, <laughs> so then uh, then we had Kaf, Lamed. So these were the two uh, sort of dual letters for today. And then it's Mem, uh, like this. Mem. Nun, Samech. And it's a bit like I don't know. There we go. Same. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, we we can see that it rhymes a bit as well. So it's what here the nature of it going to play a bit. I think at least I find it a lot easier. So we've got Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalit, He, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yod, and then Kaf, Lamed, Emnun, Amech. Lamed, Samech, Emla, vocalization. You're, you're cutting out a little bit, um, which, which is probably fine because it's towards the end of the stream. But just to let you know, uh, at the vital moment when you were doing ah. the recitation, <laughs> we, we, we lost you. Yes. This, this is the bit of the stream that the viewers are going to want to be looping over and over to, to practice the, the chant. So um, just now that you've reconnected, do you want to just go through that again, the, the, just the chant from from the top sure. down to where as far as we've gone. Yes. So so we've got these three fives basically. So Aleph, Beth, Gimel Dalit He. Vav Sayin Chet Tet Yod. Kaf Lamed Memnun Samech. And they Amazing. Yeah. They here you can see that there's similar vocalization. So Lamed and Samech have similar so the sing songy nature of it yeah, begins to show itself as well. Is is this pattern the two three two three two three two three two a? Is that just a the the way that like children will learn the 
it's, it's like saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Everyone always pauses at the same places. I think so. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. This is how I've done it for myself. Uh, but there, there was also that song posted on the Discord, which does it a little bit different. But I don't like that one because it's sometimes it'll because that one starts off and it says Aleph Beth Veth, where it, it shows both pronunciations of the Beth, but it doesn't strictly do it for all of the other letters that also have mm. different pronunciations. And I don't like that. So I prefer this approach where it's nicely sort of divided, um, but and it and it has a, a uh, what, what do you call it? Um, a regular rhythm or something like where it's always two and then three, two and then three, two and then three, until we get to the end where there's two last uh, vowels. So we'll do in the next session, I think, another yeah five, and then there's the last two. This cadence seems to be working excellently. So I think okay, we, <laughs> it, 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 it sounds good to me. So, but but the the next week is the last time we have a full bonanza of five letters to learn. Oh, yes. So we better make the most of it. Um, I guess that's probably it for today. Um, do you have any uh, anything, any plugs, et cetera? I, I, don't, I don't think I do. I don't think. Your upcoming book, which is still not out. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that, that I want to slow. I'll probably do another. I'll I'll like read chapter two or something when I'm even closer. But the the format. I, I have to sit down and like make sure that the formatting is good for print. Like the book is finished, but, <laughs> but now it's like the it has to you know print well, and then they'll send me a copy, and then I can look at it, and then I can say that's nice. <laughs> are you, like are you enjoying then, that process? I I feel like that would be quite fun. I would, but I'm I'm very busy at the moment. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I could just sit down and format my book for like a week. I probably yeah. just need a couple of hours. I probably don't need a week. But if I could sit down and and like figure out what exactly the format needs to be, and then do it, then I would enjoy well, the process a lot more. I think. <laughs> well, th thank you so much out of your busyness for coming and uh, helping me and my my viewers struggle through a little more of a a new foreign language. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next installment. Me too. Thanks. Thanks for allowing me to do this because it's very good, very good practice. I think I'll be able to use it a lot as well in future. So they, me, they say that you, once you've taught something, then you really know it, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's hope so. <laughs> uh, will there be a hand drawn map at the front of the book? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you take me for a PJ train. <laughs> Some kind of that's that's reason enough to buy in itself. Great. Yeah. Thanks everybody.